armed. Flight termination system is armed. We are getting closer and closer to that T0 mark, Daryl. And there's a big moment at T minus 45 seconds. What do we hear there? We're going to hear the uh, launch conductor, Scott Barney, verify la from the last minute that everybody's ready to go and we get a green to go for launch. It's been a lot of work to get to this point, a One lot ten. of preparation. Let's listen in. There, we just heard vent valves locked, and as you saw, Daryl, you pointed out earlier that steaming off the vehicle has now stopped. The vent One valves are locked. Rock, report range status. The range is green. That is a great sign to hear range is green, Daryl, that we are good to go. Coming up on that pole from launch conductor Scott Barney. 40. Stable at step three. Twenty five. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Landsat nine. And there it is, the word to launch Landsat nine. You must ten. Nine. nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Press in ignition. And lift off. Lift off of an Atlas V rocket and Landsat 9. Continuing the legacy of an irreplaceable 50 year record on our ever changing planet. Control system response looks good. Party 180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. Vehicle has begun the uh, pitch over maneuver. Body rates look good. That pitch over maneuver heading it to the south towards Southern California and down to Mexico. Now passing 40 seconds into flight. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. Pump speeds and injector pressures all within expected ranges. There's a shot from our tracker cam above the marine layer. Now 55 seconds into flight. Vehicle is now completing the pitch over maneuver. Body rate responses continue to look good. Three minutes remaining in the boost phase of flight. Pump speeds and injector pressures on the RD-180 continue to look good. Body rate's continuing to look good. And at 1 minute 20 seconds into flight, Atlas is now supersonic, vehicle passing Mach 1. A critical moment for the rocket. And vehicle is now passing max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. RD-180 performance continues to look good throughout boost phase. Engine's now throttling down slightly as expected. Engine response looks good. That throttle down reduces the stress on the 19-story tall vehicle. At one minute, 50 seconds into flight. Vehicle is now 10.7, correction, 13 miles in altitude, 7.9 miles downrange distance, traveling at 1,500 miles per hour. Now just under two minutes remaining in the boost phase of flight. At 2 minutes 18 seconds, the Atlas V vehicle now weighs just one half of its liftoff weight. And vehicle has gone to closed loop guidance. Body rates indicating a slight adjustment uh, can be expected for this phase of flight. There's a beautiful shot right there looking back towards the planet and see the plume from the RD-180. And the reaction control system on the Centaur is now pressurizing to flight levels. System pressure response looks good. So the reaction control system on Centaur, they're prepping it. engine operating parameters continue to look good throughout boost phase. Body rates remain stable. Coming up in 60 seconds, the booster engines will cut off. Approximately one minute remaining now until booster engine cutoff. Our tracker shot getting a great. And now three minutes, 15 seconds into flight. Atlas is 48 miles in altitude, 70 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,600 miles per hour. Great shot as it goes out over the Southern Pacific. 
Pump speeds and injector pressures on RD-180 continue to look good throughout boost phase. And the Atlas V is now throttling to maintain a constant 5G acceleration limit. Engine response looks good. Speed currently 7,700 miles per hour. Has begun boost phase chill down. Now throttling to maintain a constant 4.6G acceleration limit in preparation for VECO. This is where the booster engine cuts off and then separates. And we have Beco booster engine cutoff standing by for stage set. And we have good indication of Atlas Centaur separation. We have pre-start on the RL-10 standing by for ignition. And there you see the separation. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Chamber pressure looks good. Body rates look good. Beautiful shot of the booster falling away as you're looking and we down. Have good indication of payload fairing jettison. And you should see the, the payload fairy. Sometimes they come around the side. Minutes, 11 seconds. There you see RL10 one. performance continues to look good in the early part of this first burn. Now passing four minutes, 47 seconds into flight. So we're in a good point, Mick. Flight is looking good. We're going to monitor the situation here. But uh, what a beautiful launch. What a beautiful flight so far. Five minutes but there's still a lot of work to do. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of work to go on, but beautiful shot there of the RL-10 engine in space, uh, sending Landsat 9 onto its orbit. A great launch this morning. So excited for this. We're getting some of that uh, orbital sunrise on the uh, engine bell there, and that's just a neat look as you look back at our planet. All right, Marie, we'll keep track of things in here, but for the meantime, we'll send it back out to you on the hill. All right, there is a live view on your screen now of Landsat uh, on its way into orbit. Turning now to one of the many practical applications of Landsat, the U.S. Department of Agriculture uses it to track annual yield of every crop grown in the United States. Disaster managers can see impacts from floods and other natural disasters. Resource managers can use the data to direct crop rotation and monitor water use. Take a look. We're going to be in an orbit. It's a little bit higher. You just heard we're just about a minute out. Yeah, so what's happening is we have this first burn, and we're trying to get a slightly lofted orbit this morning into that near-polar sun-synchronous orbit, Daryl, so that we can get Landsat 9 up there. What will happen is main engine cutoff will occur, and then we will coast for uh, several minutes uh, to get Landsat 9 into the orbit it needs to be, and then we will get spacecraft separation at uh, L plus 1 hour and 20 minutes. Hard to believe. We're just a few seconds away from main engine cutoff, but hard to believe this uh, spacecraft and this rocket have gone almost completely around the planet. Uh, currently uh, coming up through uh, eastern Africa over Turkey. We're just seconds away. Let's listen in to the and call for main, main, cu main engine cutoff. Seconds. And we have Miko managing cutoff. Body rates look good. The vehicle is now recovering from the uh, shutdown transients. And there you go, Daryl. We heard from United Launch Alliance commentator Patrick Moore, who's done a fantastic job since liftoff of filling us in on all the activities that have been going on. And we just got confirmation of main engine cutoff. So Landsat 9 and the Centaur will... Uh, coast for a little bit and then we're about an hour and three minutes from Landsat 9 separation. Yeah, it'll coast for a lot of it, right? <laughs> because as you can see in the bottom of the screen, we have removed our progress bar with the milestones and now have a new progress bar, which will show you the time to spacecraft separation, which you can currently see is set at an hour and three minutes. We'll be monitoring everything here, uh, but once again, we'll send it back out to the hill with Murray. Get off, get off. And that extra fuel will allow Landsat 7 to continue on and re-enter Earth's atmosphere, which is important, keeping space junk clear out. That'll send it back down into Earth's atmosphere where it will burn up. And then that 
Mick makes way for an here's a look at the graphical animation of what Centaur is doing right now with Landsat at the front. You're looking uh, it's pointing down. You see the nozzle up. You see Landsat 9 at the other end. Of course, it's an animation, but it's real time data. It's taking data from the telemetry to show its representation in space. And currently, there's a reason why it's positioned like that. Tell us. Yeah, so that we can keep the fuel on board as we get ready uh, towards the front of the Centaur as we get ready to prep for Landsat seven, uh, 9, sorry, Landsat 9's uh, separation. And then uh, moving on to our next part of our mission, which would be main engine start two for our CubeSat deployments later on in the mission timeline. Uh, so, so far we've heard from Patrick Moore as they continue to look at this uh, data that uh, everything looks great and the Centaur and Landsat 7 are on their proper trajectory. That's right. And so for now, though, we've got to focus on Landsat 9 separation from Centaur. And as you can see at the bottom of your screen, we're about 27 minutes away from that and continuing separation bolts. And this Marmon clamp that is tied around, as you saw earlier in the upstand video, tied around on the bottom of Landsat 9. It will release that clamp, and Landsat 9 will then be pushed away using some separation springs. Very little force that is needed to get Landsat 9 going on its uh, way for separation. So very simple design, but took a long time to do. Our mechanical engineers have been following this as they mated Landsat 9 to the uh, the Marmon clamp, and uh, it made sure everything was right from a tension and perspective, and, you know, we're just looking forward for that set moment. And we're watching now an animation that is tied to real-time data, so we'll see that moment. You know, it's interesting, you talk about springs putting it in the final moment. It takes rocket engines to get it up there, right? It takes rocket engines to get it close into orbit, but it does its final move with springs. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we need all that thrust and power to leave Mother Earth and get out of her gravitational pull. But once we're in space and orbit, it takes very little uh, work to, to make things happen. As we have watched Centaur and Landsat 9 orbit in this coast phase, we've seen the uh, reaction control system just maintain Centaur in its space. So we're doing we're doing good, and uh, that, that's uh, just how rocket science works. Yep, just about 70 seconds away now as we're counting down until Landsat 9 separation from Centaur. Once this happens, though, Mick, there's still a more mission uh, more mission to go. There's some CubeSats on board. One minute yeah, minute absolutely. Minute. Landsat 9 is our primary mission today, and once we, once we uh, separate Landsat 9, Centaur will begin its maneuvers in chilling down again the RL-10 engine and getting ready to restart, or what we call main engine start two for a, f a few second burn there. And then they will do a Miko main engine cutoff again. And then we will do a third burn to get into the trajectory and orbit that we need for to deploy the two uh, CubeSats that are on board. And Daryl, you had mentioned earlier in the show, today is a first for us also on Atlas V with a four burn. We will do that fourth burn to dispose Centaur and not leave it in space as space jump. A point of history for the uh, Atlas system and Centaur. We're listening now to see. And standing by for spacecraft separation shortly. Let's listen in. We are expecting spacecraft separation at any moment. And we have successful separation of the Landsat 9 Observatory. And there you go. <laughs> so excited for that. I mean, I'm so happy to hear that. That is uh, just uh, exciting to see Landsat 9 on its way and continue that 50 years of data. And there she goes. An impressive sight. It is an animation. But...